so I'm going to have to uh, paint against the clock. And this is a very exciting time in Chris Collins career because um, he, the funding has just come through for the last four Stations of the Cross. I think it was the novelist uh, Sarah Maitland funded Station 8 and that got some publicity and then other people came on board and funded the others, um, mainly private collectors or members of the con congregation. And, um, but Chris is under enormous pressure now to, to finish the last four Stations of the Cross in time for the Good Friday service in um, uh, Easter 2008. Chris specialises in, in painting odd characters, characters from the fringes, um, characters who show both um, some of the, the joy of being alive but also some of the, the pain and the sorrow. Chris Gullen is a, is a relatively late starter. He's been painting for between 10 or 15 years. I think he turned 40 this year, I hope you won't mind me saying. And um, he's entirely self-taught, uh, never been through the door of an art college, doesn't know very many, if any, other artists. Uh, and came to the attention of the editors of Bête Noire, which is a poetry magazine based in Hull. In 1993, Chris had his first major one-man show in a trio of exhibitions with David Hockney and the portraitist Peter Edwards. Indeed, his show was televised and proved so popular with the visiting public that the museum gallery extended it by two weeks. We all just decided to do what we wanted to do, so Chris gave up everything to go full-time um, painting. Our other friend, um, his ambition was to become a tramp. That was quite easy, that one, really. Um, so he became a tramp. And my ambition was to go to university, and uh, yeah, which is what I did, and studied English and French, and then got into art there as well, studied art history. In the same year, he also showed with the Hunting Group Prize, and thereafter began to develop a very distinctive, almost allegorical style, and showed in mixed exhibitions in England and Scotland. I've got a, a, a clearer idea of what I want to do now, um, and I'm trying to sort of condense these images. Um, into single figures now and to really make the faces more powerful. Well, I've, I've uh, not exactly taken on too much, but I've got the, the Stations of the Cross to finish. Well, the commission for the church, um, you know, was uh, very unexpected and um, I just had uh, a gallery in the East End with a, with a window onto a, onto a main drag and um, chap called Father Alan and his wife Sabine. They saw through the window Chris had done a sort of a, a cover version of um, Titian's um, Penitent Magdalene. One in particular drew my attention, um, the Penitent um, Magdalene, which was a picture not of Mary Magdalene, but of um, clearly a down and out woman of the streets. And that picture in particular captured my imagination in that although it was certainly a secular piece of art. It embodied um, some religious uh, traditions in the way it was painted and certainly some religious themes as the, the name suggests. And it seemed to me that to bring some of those issues into the Stations of the Cross, uh, a series of paintings that we could hang in church depicting um, the last journey of Jesus um, on the way to the cross, um, would be a very fascinating confrontation uh, between the world of today and, and our religious traditions. Next, the campaign to save a Grade 1 listed church from ruin. Father Alan Green says St John's in Bethnal Green is in serious danger of falling down. He's asked the Lottery Heritage Fund to help, but he also wants to transform the church into a cultural centre. As part of his mission, he's recruited the services of a controversial London artist. Keir Simmons reports. Hidden away in East London, St John on Bethnal Green was designed by the great British architect Sir John Soane 150 years ago. But it might not be a secret for long. The vicar wants to turn it into a space for concerts and galleries as well as prayer. We have plans to have a cafeteria in here so that indeed it will be possible for people to sit on one side and be drinking coffee and on the other for, for people to be in prayer or to be celebrating Mass. Um, if we design it well enough, the two should not be intrusive, um, but there's no reason why they shouldn't be happening together. Making this project even more unique is the artist Chris Golan. He's been asked to paint the Stations of the Cross for the church. It's not without controversy. His work depicts often strange images, far from traditional. It's quite a responsibility. Um, you know, it, it's going to affect uh, what people 
think about the stations. Um, you know, obviously, I, I don't want to sort of be blasphemous or anything of that sort. Um, but nevertheless, I think there's a lot of thought to be to be uh, put into it. The whole thing is wonderfully romantic. Chris works on an almost secret island on the Thames named Platts 8. Like the church, he's hidden away. There are those that might like St John's to stay that way, but it does desperately need renovation. And when the work is done, hopefully many more people will be able to enjoy it in all its glory. This is Keir Simmons for London Tonight. Chris was very keen on it. He had um, gained many of his, his themes for painting from um, the European religious traditions. And so the governing body of the church, the, the parochial church council, um, had to meet with Chris, had to look at his work and discuss with him whether they wanted um, his particular um, works to be hanging in the church. Everyone, every single person, um, was sure that he was the right person to, to paint the stations for our church. Um, and even those who, who were not comfortable with his art saw that it was an important commission for this church um, and that it, it would um, say some very important things for us um, to have those paintings here in this church. We began talking about the possibility of doing it nine years ago um, and we started the commission seven years ago and it's only now um, two weeks ago that we found the money for the 14th picture. So it, it, it's, uh, it's a huge task, and um, but Chris is determined, if he can, if time permits, and this is what we're all panicking about at the moment, that he will finish it in time for Good Friday next year. So my job really is to protect his time, so we're trying to produce silk screen prints, I've got him going into a print studio, so he can produce multiple images from one play to one set of screens, and. Um, you know, I'm trying to protect his time because every day counts, you know, with the regatta commission and the church. Um, it's just a race against time. It's a race.